everyone! This is Angel's Kiss 2007 here with a new tutorial talking through the complexities and endless opportunities that opacity brings to creating. You can use opacity to create completely custom designs and shapes on meshes, like shortening a dress, making fabric transparent, adding complexities to rooms with features like glass and custom shaped greenery, and making unique accessories like add-on makeup and more. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at opacity and how to use it. Opacity maps are primarily in black and white. Black meaning that these portions of the map are completely hidden from view, white meaning that these portions are completely visible, and you also have the option to use grayscale tones for different levels of transparency when blending mode is turned on. This means that we can use portions of the texture to create extremely versatile designs and this really elevates your designs when used effectively. And most textures can use this. Layers and clothing can be manipulated. Many developers have created super flexible any shape meshes, and you can customize the look and feel of nearly any product by removing parts you're not interested in having. Let's take a look at how we can use opacity to create a super customized backpack with this great mesh made by Polystyrene with these customizable texture areas. We have the UV line maps, convenient shadow maps, and a specular shininess map available for you to work with on this product page as well. Here you can see these areas that can either be completely hidden to just have normal backpack shape, or you can customize them to be any design and shape you'd like. You could do lettering, animal ears, spikes, anything that fits in this shape. Additionally, this outer layer can be customized with opacity to reveal the layer underneath which again, gives us so many customization options. Creating these textures can be done quite easily in your program of choice, and here's a quick look at me making these textures. The key here is using the line, UV maps, and shadow maps to your advantage and creating dynamic textures quickly and easily. Using layer modes to use the shadow maps to your advantage are great. I love color burn and screen or soft light in Photoshop, and burn and soft light in GIMP. Also, the more you can add to your surface, the more definition you get. For this tutorial, I'm adding a simple mesh texture to the backpack to give it a more dynamic look. I'm also drawing on details like zippers, a front backpack pouch, and using handmade materials for the inside of the backpack, as well as some designs found online that are free to use in commercial designs to make cute patches. Check out the tutorial page to find out some great tips and resources for finding images online that are safe to use in your works. Our focus now is the front of the backpack. I want to make this plastic area see-through so that we can see into the backpack. Let's take a look at how to do that. Additionally, if you're creating an IMV studio, you can also create a specular shininess map to make this area shine realistically. Let's take a look at our outside layer texture. We're going to pick the points that need to be mostly see-through, mostly visible, and anything in between. So first we know that this area outside of the plastic is completely visible, or it's going to be white in our opacity. Then we're going to take this middle section, the plastic area, and make it gray. That's going to give us at about 50% see-through transparency when we add it into IMV. And then for depth and realism, let's take these shiny points and make them nearly white so that they look like the light is shining on them. One trick that you can use to make this simpler for your designs is to create your opacity first and then use it to influence your final texture, which we can see happened here. We simply took this opacity map and cut out this area, not using the white, on the outside and applied it in a screen mode to give it this nice reflective texture and it makes sure that you can perfectly line up your highlights in your final design. If we apply this to our backpack we're really going to see the effect take shape. Now you can see right through to the design underneath. Let's take the same approach with our side panels. You can use design and black and white opacity maps to create any shape you'd like. I've gone ahead and made cute cat ears and whiskers for my backpack, as well as another version with spikes for this other backpack. 
We could also choose to apply a solid black opacity to completely hide these panels as well, revealing just the normal backpack shape. Now let's take a look at this backpack mesh in the new IMVU Studio Beta tool. Over on the left you can find the different asset tabs, first being materials, is where your textures are, mesh, which is where the mesh components live, and actions if your item has any animations. So on the materials tab, when you click on any material, you will see all of the different types of maps you can add, including two new ones, normal and shininess, as well as all of our settings down here. This one here is actually our OO layer, or zero zero, and that is behind this outer layer, so we're going to leave that one for now. But let's get started on the second one. This is our back map, and we're going to click the plus icon. And if you already have materials in this project, you can find them here in the Project Images tab. Otherwise, you can also select them by clicking Add Image, and you can reselect the texture from your files. So we're going to apply the back texture, and then we're going to move on to the next, which is the sides. Same thing, we're going to hit this plus sign. And here you can see I already have this in the project. And then our next one is the layer with the window. So I am going to add the windowed layer with the front. I'm going to add the opacity map. And then we're going to replace that because it was already in the project. It's updating it for us. Sometimes that might show as no blending and you do want to make sure it says composite when you're using a grayscale texture like we are for our opacity. And then we're going to apply the straps. With all these ones that we have applied so far, let us hit the preview button. But now you can see our shape is coming together again, just like we did in the regular creator tool. And you can see our window is working just fine. So we're going to go here to our original layer and we are now going to add the contents of our backpack. We're going to hit preview and now our backpack is looking much more like normal. We have to apply our cat ears and there are some new steps that you're going to need to take when using the IMV Studio tool. So going here we're going to add our cat ears, we're going to add the cat ears left and the opacity map and we're going to replace it because it is already in our project file and then we're going to go to the other ear and do the same thing. Now, when I hit preview, you'll see here that in this product, you have this odd gray that you wouldn't have seen in the other tool. In the other tool, when you apply your opacity map, you're set. Um, here, there are two steps we need to take. Um, one is if we were using grayscale opacity, we would want to change the blending to composite, but we don't need to do that at the moment. But we do need for each ear to turn on the new alpha threshold toggle. When you turn it on, it is at zero and you can leave it at zero, but you can experiment with changing this based on your project needs. So let's do this to the other ear. We're going to hit apply alpha threshold and we're going to hit preview. And now this gray will disappear. And now we are all set with our backpack and there are some other tools you can experiment in your free time with, like our shininess map, which we created earlier. So if we go back to this here, we can go to shininess and add our shininess map and experiment with how that looks. We can add our specular map, we can change the reflectivity to be higher, and hit preview. And you might have to change your room type to be able to see it more clearly because it's a very bright room. So you might not see it as clearly in, as you would in a room that has better ambience or more reflective points of light. When you're all set, go over to the info tab to make sure all of your information is filled out for your product and then you can hit submit. If you're editing an existing product, you would hit resubmit to update your product or you would hit submit as new if it's a new product. I hope this has been a helpful tutorial on how to use opacity as well as how to get started with these fun, customizable backpacks. I can't wait to see the fun designs you come up with.